Hi, this is Don Clark with FileMakerProGurus.com and FM Database Consulting. I'm here with Susan Fenema. Susan, how are you today? Hey, Don. Good to talk to you again. Susan's with Beyond the Chaos. She's the chief. No, I know. It's the chaos, chaos eradicating officer. There we go. Right. Chaos <laughs> eradicating officer. CEO. CEO. <laughs> I always go to chief executive officer for some reason. That, at any rate, we're, this is our second session in the project management series. Uh, for the new year here. Happy New Year to everybody out there. Um, and with this time, we're looking at what are the developers' expectations or responsibilities? What What is the project manager? What should you as a project manager expect from your developer? And what should you as a developer know that you're responsible for? So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Susan because she's the project manager expert. <laughs> Thanks, Don. So one of the things that we want to talk about is all those tools you're asked to use. Right. So mm -hmm. where you track your time, is it in FileMaker? Is it in Harvest? Is it in any of those others? Uh, where are you asked to track the project itself? Is it right. Basecamp? Is it Teamwork? There's tons of options and you might have to use different ones for each client. Yeah, there's Slack, there's Trello, there's, I don't know. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there are a lot and different clients will use different things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that it's important though is to use that tool to communicate yourself. Right. And one of the things I suggest to many developers is to put the projects that you're working on, the tools you're working on, as home pages on your browser. So when you log in every morning, up pops, you know, your four different clients' uh, projects right in front of your face. Okay. Uh, gives you a place to know what is coming up and to know okay. what the tasks are. Almost all of these have me or what's on my plate type pages. Right. Exactly. I would use those. Mm -hmm. um, project launching pad or something like that. Right. And so checking off or assigning the tasks to the right person when they're finished is an important thing to make sure your project manager knows it's no longer in your court. Right. I'm, I'm asking the client to review it or it's totally finished. Right. Exactly. The other is, yeah. you know, the other is making sure that you are posting time to the correct job and mm -hmm. the correct task. To the right program. Right. <laughs> with notes of what you did. Yeah. It's not just, oh, I worked on this today. It's, you know, I actually edited this script or I worked on this uh, task number from Zendesk, you know, whatever it is that exactly. you're referencing. That's a really good point because uh, I'll, I'll write down that I wrote, rewrote a particular script. And, yeah. And, and then and call the new subscript and I'll put them by, well, I, I use numbers. I'm surprised okay. uh, there's other people out there, I guess, with better memories than me, they can remember a, a, a phrase, you know that this is supposed to do such and such and such and such with that. And then me, I just put a four digit code on the front of it and I can always remember a four digit code for, and I can find that really fast and filter for it. But well, I seem to be in a minority of all the developers out there, but that's the whole good point you're making is back to the subject at hand. You have to write down what you did enough information that me as a project manager or as another developer could go into there and look at what you did. You know, and there are some tools. Um, there is a drop in if you're using Harvest with your clients, mm -hmm. there's actually a drop in that works with Chrome and Safari. That if you're in Basecamp or you're in Zendesk or you're in Teamwork, you can click on the little timer and it will open Harvest for you. It will note that task name and now it's there. So use your tools to help you too. You're not out on your own. Yeah. It a lot is. Of people use FileMaker developers, you have a FileMaker management you know, project management tool of some kind they've developed or they're using. Uh, in and, and that's fine too. I'm, I'm, I'll tell you, I know this is probably horrible to say, but I recommend to most FileMaker developers to steer clear of trying to invent your own thing in-house, unless it's a product you're selling. Right. Um, there's, you're just going to end up deliver, developing it in your spare time. And it's like the cobbler's never having his shoes, right? It's mm -hmm. never going to be as high quality. Now, if you have one, there's nothing wrong with using it. Uh, but that's, that's just my two cents. You know, don't, don't wait on it. A different video because 
Yeah. A lot of times, I mean, that's the reason I have trouble with Basecamp or I have trouble with Slack or with Trello. There are some things it does wonderfully and there's other things it doesn't even do well at all, in my opinion. That's true. I mean, one of these things. And it, and if it's one of those, if it's one of those areas that falls in the thing that I feel is necessary to have, then I'm not going to use it. Well, um, and now you have FileMaker API, so you can link into all these things too, if you want to pull it together. So there, there are some really cool things to do, but yeah, that's, a great stuff out there. Yeah. that's off the, the track of our conversation. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun one though. <laughs> um, you know, part of the other role of, of the developer is making sure that when it is time for the client to get billed from the contractor, that those notes are easy to pull from whatever tool they're using. Exactly. And, you and gotta send put that in the bill. You right. Details. Yeah. You know, so making sure that you have communicated also in a way that the client will understand, not just the, the contractor. And, you know, to that end, be careful what you type in there. <laughs> you know, had to do this because the client's horrible. Is it, what if that got by somebody, right? <laughs> be <Yep>. careful. <laughs> um and the other is also, as you're looking at your project management tools, when you have that list of what is in my court today, mm -hmm. are those things truly in your court? That's something that you should be saying, oh, wait, no, no, no. Why is this still assigned to me? Project mm -hmm. manager, that should be with the client. Can you please mm -hmm. make sure that they fix it or look at right. it or get yeah, my answer? In court at this point, yeah. Right. And so mm -hmm. if it's assigned to you, the project manager believes you're working on it. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing to keep in mind yeah. as well. Yeah. Well, there's some other issues that come up from with that developers should be aware of. Right. You know, one is what if you've promised a certain amount of time to a specific contractor that you're working for? Mm -hmm. Say, oh, yeah, no problem. I can give you 15 hours a week. Right. Every week. Right. Every week. That's three hours a day. Is that blocked on your calendar? You know, that, that is a really good way for a developer to find a, a, a subcontracting developer to guarantee that they're giving the amount of mm -hmm. time they say, as well as to not overpromise. Right. You know, if you've promised five people 20 hours a week, uh, where are your 100 hours coming from? <laughs> you know? Sleep's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> right. And as a, as a project manager, if you tell me I'm, you're giving me 20 hours a week, I am building the schedule based on that. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling the client, okay, right. well, 20 hours, it's a 60 hour project. I'll say three weeks and then I'm always padding it, you right. know? Okay. So five weeks, but if you're only working on it three hours a week, now the whole thing's blown. Yeah. So making sure that you're giving what you promise is important. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you're stretched and you're in demand, raise your rates, subcontractors. That I means call that to people. Yeah. Yeah. And I um, that advice myself too. So it it, it means you're in demand and it means right. you're worth it. Um, mm -hmm. so work less and get paid more. I think that's what all of us want, right? Yeah, not worth it all, you'd be paid a lot more, we'd be perfect, but that's <laughs> It would be that's great. Recurring income, you know, <laughs> passive recurring income. That's the secret to life, I guess. Those are the that, guys like, you know, Bill Gates that doesn't have to work at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, all, yeah. At any rate, um, you no, know, I, oh, there's more things too, though, that we, that, that I think they should be responsible for. Um, you know, when they're having problems or when they see something's not right, what do you, what do you recommend? You so, know, Right. One thing that comes up might be a completely unrealistic deadline. Okay. You know, right. A, a project manager or a salesperson, somebody might have promised something to the client that especially once you dig into the technology, mm -hmm. like that is not happening right. ever. <laughs> that is important to make sure that the project manager knows early and upfront, right. not late and to set to change the expectation with the client it hey that might affect the budget as well setting expectations early right and often so important mm -hmm. um you know and the other is then working with the project manager to figure out hey can part of this maybe be delivered by the deadline okay. um and if so can we work with the client to find out what they actually is there a piece of it they need by that date okay 
you know, uh, that communication, man, I can't, I think that that's been the theme overall, hasn't it, Don? Uh, pretty much that's what it comes down to, but knowing what, what and when you have to communicate is a big part of that. Right. Uh, like you said, avoidance and assumptions, you know. They're yeah, dangerous. they're very dangerous. Yeah. So. Um, and if you can clearly communicate and give consequences, it's mm -hmm. really important. I think my catchphrase is always clear, concise communication with consequences to the client. It's a lot of C's. <laughs> <always a> thing. <laughs> <laughs> but those, those consequences are important without making the client feel uh, threatened or wrong. But, okay. you know, hey, we can do all this by Friday, but in order to make that happen, we need this from you by Tuesday at three o'clock. Well, you know, if you do that, if you follow the rules, if you keep the communication lines open, your life as a developer is going to be a whole lot easier and your project manager is going to be smiling a lot more too. So, <laughs> <That's> absolutely <laughs> true. <laughs> I think that pretty much covers what we had for this, this portion of it. Um, we've got one more video left in this series and that one's going to be on, on helping the, you, the developer or a developer, if you're listening uh, and watching it uh, to, how you can better track doing what you're doing and do your job more effectively. Yep. So that's what we're going to do next week. Um, we'll be back then. So we hope to see you then. Until then, I'm Don Clark with FileMicroProGurus.com and FM Database Consulting and Susan. And I'm Susan Fenema, the Chaos Eradicating Officer for Beyond the Chaos. We'll see you we'll next see. week. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.